Run that shit, Tay. Spoil me with money, sis. Yeah, watch me cause I'm gonna really nerd. The only other thing that I bang is the doors of them coming with me. Bitches ain't fucking with me. And they can't see I grab the whole moment. Yeah. Set the whole show on the time I'm home. Yeah. Even when you go, just keep, keep going. Thanks to me, we don't really want it. I can wrap stuff around home when you love me. Let the song, I'm coming on. Those who like that really wish they were gone. And when I'm in town, like bitches stay home. You pay for attention, I work for my phone. But they really think they can't get it to come. Texas who raised me, we work with me on. Ugh. Fuck the same person, I don't like that. To the juice box, because this episode is brought to you courtesy of DJ Juice and the juice box. So, man, we got to clap it one time for DJ Juice. Shout out DJ Juice. He over there in the cut. But uh, as you can see, I'm your brother, Barley, and I got my brother. Second son, that's second with a K. S-U-N, because I am Carolyn's second son. Oh, damn. Now, as you can see, our guest tonight is the one and the only. The Big Smitty Hawkins. Hey, the queen. Hello. You know what I'm saying? And um, Smitty, it's glad to have you back on the press box. Thank you for having me, you guys. Big Aries. Big, big Aries. Just what they said I would. The Ram. You know what I'm saying? And this Not is the devil. The oh. precious Lamb of God. Oh, man. And this is the second time that she's been on one of our guests. And the first time we had Smitty was a little over a year ago. July. And, um. Uh, Man, what a difference a year makes, Smitty. Yes, uh, it did. Oh, um, <laughs> we got to get on the right to the good part, man, because you just put out a badass mixtape and had the whole mixtape release party, man. Tell us about first your new project. So we got Ride Me that just dropped this on all platforms. Just go ahead and get that shit, stream that shit. It gives you a lot of different variety. Uh, I titled it Riding East. It's in um, it's inspo to UGK Riding Dirty. We from Texas, but we going for the east side of Texas. Cause you know Come what I'm on. saying? I'm a I'm a I'm East Texas native, you know. So Riding East, you know, we uh, me and my sister we incorporated the you know put our own little spin to our cover and track list. So yeah, it's a ten songs, twenty two minutes from the smoke ride, chill to you know what I'm saying. Got uh, good producers. All of them really takes us except for one. I got three platinum producers on there. Shout out to them. And yo, that's that's it's good. It was worth the wait. The best fucking mixtape of bitch nigga everything has ever heard coming out of East Texas. Really. Really. Well, hey, oh, yeah. Uh, tell us about these features you got on there. There's no features. Okay, I just want to put that out there. Mm. Oh, it's no features, bitch. <laughs> that's awesome. So I put some on, and that's all they motherfucking mom. Mm. It ain't no feature. That's hard right there. You know, when somebody put out a project with no features, yeah. they really telling you, man, I got this shit under control. I can rap in real life. So, from the time that we, from the time a year ago, I say. You done went through a whole transformation as an artist. You know what I'm saying? You got a team behind you now. Kind of tell us how you came to the point of, you know, developing this team you got now. Management and all. Yeah, when you first met me, I was out here just shooting the shit, just doing shit that I thought was, you know, was going to keep me relevant and stuff like that. I'm really, like, still, like, with the, in the uh, music industry on the business side, so I didn't want to go into any situation blind, not knowing, because I really feel like I'm a big deal as an artist. I don't just say I'm a rapper, I'm an artist, because 
there's multiple things that I can do. So I knew like with I feel like I'm a good weapon. So with that, I'm going to need like you know armor and shit. I'm gonna need people that's gonna fuck with me. So I'll search for the people I got. I got a Sergeant B out of Texas Arcana. He's over the TBR Studios. That stands for Texas Boys Recording Studios. Okay. He's over my music. Uh, so all the engineering, the mixing, and master. That's him. That's all him. My vocals there and everything. So shout out to him. I'm also under managing with DJ Juice. Um, Juice box. Don't play with them bitch. But we in right now, you know what I'm saying? He really ain't wanna fuck with a bitch. If you want to be technical. I don't know what you mean. He didn't wanna he didn't wanna well, to be honest, I he over there talking yeah, to me. I, you know, I can say it. I ain't scared to say it in front of him. The nigga don't wanna fuck with me. You know, he just brought me on a blaze just because I guess my name was, you know, getting a little buzz because I was going there to do my own. I was still booking shows and shit for mm -hmm. me, but I don't know what's going on. Like I said, I'm I need to I need I needed help. I needed guidance. I needed help. So I went to Juice, he interviewed me after interviewing me at the blaze. Shit was going good. I really just like, you know what I'm saying? I really want you to work with me. I don't care like what you do. Like I don't care if you can just give me tips or just something like notes. Like I really want to work with you. Just like bring me the clean versions. It was the on clean versions and bring it to him. So right around the time I got did the interview with y'all, I want to say like last year we did so when we did that East Texas Cypher, I did, that's how Sergeant B like really like got more ear to my music. Cause Sergeant B linked me up. I was linked with Sergeant B by Sergeant J, his younger brother. Okay. His younger brother DJ for me at a party one time. And he was like, man, yeah, she cool. We don't want to work with you. So he's also on uh, my production with Ryan East. But long story short, after the interview, uh, no, after the cypher and my name was getting buzzed, I linked up with Sergeant B. I recorded the kiss song. Uh, and I asked him for a clean version. I asked Lord, I really want you to work with me too. We weren't trying to fuck with no girls. I, I wasn't nobody trying to fuck with no girls. I don't know what's going on. But I'm like, I, you know what I'm saying? I said, fuck all that. Come on, them niggas gonna work for me. <laughs> so shit, I brought the song on the juice. What song? First of all. Let me see it. That's number two on the mix set. That's produced by Sergeant J. Uh, 1501 uh, Records uh, Entertainment. So like I brought that the juice, just heard it a couple times, called me, he was like, yo, we gonna set up for me, you know, do it with Sarge, do do do. So I he gave me a test, I completed the test in the way that he received me mm. to wanna work with me. Mm. And ever since then, like I just start coming into an artist more as I'm learning and growing with them and stuff that they teach me and shit. So I've been with them like Maybe like 10 months. We probably finna come up on our year anniversary if not our past year of okay. so us working with each other. Okay. So yes, like they didn't talk me a lot, show me a lot. I even move differently in a way. I didn't have to cut some shit down in order to rebrand myself as an artist. Oh, wait a minute, stop right there. You got to right there. What, what, what you have to start doing different than the old Smitty Hoffman was doing? Well, I was like, uh, like certain places that I would go to and stuff like that, I had to not go to those places sometimes because of the tension and the level of my song was reaching. So uh, they just didn't want no janky ass people trying to put me mm. on, like fuck with me, like, you know, with promoters or like uh, just, you know, the people who pay for the party and shit like that. And so couldn't go certain places. I did calm down on less photo shoots if it wasn't evolved around music because that's how I kept my relevancy while I was trying to complete the task he wanted me to do because like I said, it's only so much that I could do as an artist mm -hmm. and I needed guidance. So like I wanted to switch from being known as a model, video vixen to an uh, actual artist. Mm -hmm. So I had to rebrand and recreate my page. Basically kind of start off from scratch. And now when you see my page and look at my concert, you'll know, oh, she's a visual. No this doubt. is a rapper. This is a artist. This is a singer. This is whatever it is, you come on my page. Yeah, okay, well. Like I say, me. What page is that? Come on. Enjoy her. Two underscores. My girl name is Joy. And I, mean, I don't feel like I need to change that because when you type in Smitty Hopkins, it's going to pull up my page number one. Yeah. But yes, enjoy her. Two underscores. So everything else is Smitty Hopkins. Except that song. Get that. Because we was listening to the music on the way up here. Mm -hmm. Bro, like, let that shit ride. Bro, like, let that shit ride. Oh. It gave you a riding feeling. Yeah. You riding easy. You riding with me. This is my thoughts. My creativity. This is what I want you to think. This is the versatile. This is what I feel about this beat. Okay. Now, 
about this beat because the lyrics there, but you know what I'm saying, when the beat come on, that's the first thing that's gonna catch anybody. Who is somebody else? Who was some of these dudes we heard saw the J? Um, his brothers. Who? Hold on, who you said Sergeant J, right? Yeah, Sergeant J, yeah, Sergeant B. Brothers. Sergeant um, B. Brothers. So my manager brother, he made like, uh, he produced four of them by himself and one of them was you and the genius. Uh, that's number three, Bounce. And we have GT Music. Uh, I forget where he's from, but he be in LA a lot. And he's worked with a lot of people. He went platinum with Tyga and Iggy. And he got a place with the Migos album. He went platinum with uh, the baby and Tyler Wayne. It's a uh, song that they had too. So, like, I have producers who genuinely want to work with me because they see something. Good. Like, they just randomly find me, like, from the explore page or from a share. Or like a random follower that I didn't know could even show me love mm. or don't know. It, it'll be a follower that you never interacted who has sent a producer to me mm. just yeah. because they watch it. I heard you, you said platinum producers on your app? I got three platinum producers. No features. No features. Three platinum producers. So how important how important do you feel like the, the social media part of your brand is? Cause I heard you say somebody just random. You know what I'm saying? Maybe share. Okay, so like, okay. just keep being consistent and keep posting your stuff because regardless of the amount of views and the likes that you're getting, whatever ratio that you get with your music versus as what you get on a regular picture, people are still watching. Because like I said, you got people who never interact with you who are sending other people to you. So it's very important to keep it neutral. So I feel like just don't be discouraged when you don't get the reaction that you're getting. Because the right producer is going to come. Mm. The right people is going to come. Your true fans is really going to come and connect to you. That sounds like the law of attraction type shit. If you own your game, exactly. then what you need is going to find you. That's exactly uh, what I mean. Now, you had, like, really, like, one of the biggest album release parties around here. I think well, it's, like, one of the first ones. Like, what was the name? Yeah, for mm. the, well, say that then. For, for, for your project, Ride East. Yeah. Uh, shout out to my brother, C.A., he yes. was in the building. He ain't here tonight. But CA was in the building. So we, did, stuff. so we did get some live footage of that though. So tell us about it. No, but how did he feel when he told you about the party when he told you ain't here? Then like when he told you and called and mm -hmm. thanked you, like, how did that conversation go? He uh actually told me that you was well received and it was lit. It was almost like a club vibe when he told me. Oh, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? I like like I said, you had like all your people there, everybody was involved with the project. You know, you pop bottles and you perform. But now nah, you tell us how, how did you feel about having the first and probably the livest, you know what I'm saying, thus far, <laughs> and, uh, and release party around here. Yeah. Oh, I also got uh, Kilo out of Houston. He's a producer that's on there as well. I work with him as well. I didn't get to shout him out. And I do got another nigga on there called DJ Him. You know? um, he did one of the songs. He's pretty cool too. So that, that's just to get my producers out the way. So that's what, like six, seven people. I can't count. Mm -hmm. I did it now. Right, but uh, anywho, so uh, I like my little part. It kind of, it kind of went how I wanted it. Right, your big part. I, 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 I <coughs> liked. I don't know. That was a different feeling, like, cause you're actually receiving love. Who actually wants to be there because it's mm -hmm. private. Mm -hmm. So by it being private, if you tell you genuinely feel for me, so you genuinely have a fear that you want to hear. So that feeling made it more surreal because, like, oh, they're all actually listening to me because. A lot of people say, like, a lot of DJs, a lot of people say, like, what else she got besides let me see it? Like, they try to be funny with it, but you the one who keeps setting the record type shit. So it's like, for people to just get a glimpse of, or, or, or hear to hear, it's like, oh, it's going to work the way it's anticipated. It was. It did good. One of the songs on the album, just like, I already got 500, I already hit 500, and we just dropped Saturday. Mm. So you doing and numbers, and each, they say. Uh, each song already has 100. Well, she doing numbers, I guess is what she's saying. Yeah, she's worried what you saying. Yeah. Uh, like I say, man, it's been a year. You didn't have all this ice around your neck a year ago, so something is working. Though. It ain't, listen, let me just go and get this out. It's fake. I, listen, it is. I ain't gonna cap like these niggas do. Don't. It just look good on me. And it do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it fits. I don't you know wanna cap I mean? like, nah, I don't need no diamond test ass nigga coming to me because I'm gonna, my people gonna cuss you out. <laughs> <laughs> when you say, when you say your people gonna cuss you out, are you talking about like the people, like your team, like yeah. your management? Yeah. Like I don't know about stores, them is my people. <laughs> like them is my people. Like Jewel Storage, my cameraman, like 
them is my body robots. Right. Like we really do gotta move that in and when we do perform no uh, um depending on like what crowd um, we're uh, performing to, we do really do gotta move as a unit. And that's one thing that I had to learn that I can't get up and go around all the time like I do being friendly. Mm -hmm. Because with certain uh, outfits that I wear, sometimes they're custom made, it's uh, revealing or if it's just like still show type mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. So I did have to learn that I had an attitude about that. But <laughs> because I'm naturally friendly. But um, yeah, that we, we gotta move because dudes will walk up to you or try to harass you and be like, oh, this nigga for real, like do too much. I love girls, mm. you know, they be drunk too sometimes. Yeah. So it's just a little girl. So yeah, yeah don't crazy, don't do that. So that you feel like that is, I you know what I'm saying, like a plus to have solid dudes around you. Like, yeah. hey, 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 you're doing too much, homie. No, that's what they do. Yeah, that's that's important. It is important. Yeah. It is important. It's the Gotta start from you know fair as shit. They can't get to me. They better not get to me. Y'all in front. It's three niggas that go through. Right. I want <laughs> I wanna know this because when was the Adam release party? That was maybe I was first. That was a few months ago. But the album just dropped. It did. So tell us what was the delay about? Oh, um, really mm -hmm. I really kept like well Sarge and me well we really was just on some shit. Like I don't know, like I don't know because we had a we had a lot of songs to choose from. Okay. And then Sarge and um he came up with the song or and everybody has been com that's another good feedback. Everybody has commented about the song or and how each song falls. Placement, yes, yeah, important. Yes. Then she it's, it's like a you actually ride to it. Every song going mm -hmm. into one another. So yes. we had different stuff to choose from. I kept and I of course I kept recording. Like I don't know. Oh, so there's some shit that didn't even make the tape. That's what I'm saying. Oh, so man. You, man. Like some songs that the people heard could probably listen to parties. Oh, uh, okay. Shit. What you gonna do? You gonna throw them away? You gonna put them, you know what I'm saying? Incorporate them into just one project? I don't keep recording. Okay. Shit. That was we don't throw away music. Okay. What about your stage performance? Have you had any shows since your, since your uh, tape dropped? I just had one this past recently, like last uh, this last week for Halloween. I had that. But I mean, shit, I'm still on the show everywhere I go. So that ain't even a problem. I can do it. It's just, I love performing. I love it. Since you done put your project out, have you had more people or anybody just reaching out like, hey, we, I need you on my shit. I want you to feature. Have you? Well, they reach out to me, but also uh, I always just send them to Juice or Sorge because I don't handle that. The management. I can't handle that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
I want you to actually know, like, the sound that you're getting is not a sound that you, you've already heard. Like, I can tap into some Texas group, but, like, my my project I just dropped doesn't scream, like, Houston or Dallas. It screams, like, originality, if you ask me. It's, it's, it's going to be different. Like, it's an East Texas shit, because I'm an East Texan. That's right. So, again, go ahead. So, there's so many words. You know, so I kind of heard, well, you know, everybody going to say Houston. Everybody going to say they Dallas. They want you to be from the place. Yeah. So, they, so when you say East Texas, they always want to say, oh, that's the country. As if we slow or we ain't got it. But the whole time, we can go anywhere and run circles around anybody everywhere. We do have some great talented artists out here. Not to say that I listen to y'all, but. Oh. Wait a minute. Now, somebody. I'm, okay. I'm telling the truth because I'm just saying it's some mainstream artists that I don't listen to. And that's, that's what I was talking about. I was just hate criticism artists artists hate i have to learn like you gotta be okay with somebody saying they're not liking your song because you mm -hmm. gotta put yourself in a fan perspective from a fan's it. point of view as a fan your favorite artist you're not gonna like little lady song you're mm -hmm. not gonna like every nigga song you're not gonna like this so i can't feel no type of way because you didn't like no certain song so what i'm gonna do is just keep making music maybe you'll find something maybe this one is for you it could have been for somebody else I feel like I ain't saying like I don't listen to y'all shit on some like I'm better than y'all. It's just like it's just not for me at this moment. I can dig it. Yeah. I can dig it because yeah, that's, as a fan, that's key. As a because fan. just because you don't like you said you don't listen to nobody local music don't mean that you don't fuck with you. It's just my sound is somewhere else right now. My ear is somewhere else. Yeah. Now yeah. stay right here real quick because you know that's my favorite question to ask. Mm -hmm. I've asked this question a number of times Screaming. to East Texas. To the East Texas conversation. Okay. In your, that's what I heard you say, uh, like we got our own sound. You know what I'm saying? So, in your opinion, where do you go to to define the East Texas sound as it relates to hip hop and rap music? Where, what artist or, or group do you go to to say, okay, well, we can start right here at least to define? East Texas sound as it relates to hip hop and rap. Okay, because I'm an R&B head, bitch. I was just gonna say that. Yeah. I just know I'm R&B, mm -hmm. even though I be ready for like I'm an R&B head. But See? uh, shit. See? I don't know. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's different. Mm -hmm. It's unique in its own way, and I can't just think of no artist or no group and be like, oh, this is such and such sound. Like, mm -hmm. oh, well, they put me in the mind of that. Cause mm -hmm. at the beginning, they was just saying I sounded like niggas just because I had a big old butt. Well, <laughs> and I don't. You didn't take the time. Motherfucker ain't actually took the time out to listen to me and stuff like that. People just, pin, I feel like people pinpoint certain things and it don't hit that. It just think they just think it makes sense for a physical attribute. Mm. So it's kind of safe to they say. It's unique. They got their own list now. I can't just say like who's saying like who pushed you. I can't no word. You know, I can't put him with nobody. No. That's hip hop rap. That's right. I can't put him with nobody. You got uh fucking Journey, low game crazy, D Journey. You can't put up with nobody on here, her sounding like no other no other female. Shit, six oh he don't he definitely don't sound like nobody. Six oh he. So mm -hmm. like I can't give you that. Okay. I can't. Yeah. I don't sound like nobody, bitch. <laughs> God, this is another little question somewhere else because uh your project ride is it has no features. Now, if you could have your choice to have a feature with any artist, dead or alive, who would be the first person you'd go to to get a feature? Just one person? Give me three. Okay, Give so, three. dead listen. Wow, now, we all know about Lil Snoop. You got a, uh, that's a whole relationship thing that you got with Lil Snoop. R.I.P. Lil Snoop. We know this one, okay, so that's one. Nicki Minaj. Okay, Nicki. Little Baby. Little baby. Drake, if I really want to just take over the world, I just need to say two lines mm -hmm. on some shit. They see a city girl, I see the world, y'all. They came in for fairy city. Mm -hmm. Me and me. Took home. From mm home -hmm. here. City girl, city boy. We down here with the country girl uh, down here in East Texas, man. Uh, I think, again, you can tell these people, man, exactly what part of East Texas are you from? Um. My people from like Lone Star, don't you feel? However, you could just say I'm just the one doing on some shit. I came out here, moved out here with my mom uh, when I was like seven, eight, and graduated from Longview. So I just say Longview, but my people from like Lone Star, 
Atlanta Cass Texas all that shit. Morris County and shit. Okay, okay. Now, Deep East Texas. Real whole bunch of East Texas shit. Now, we trying to tell them. Now, now with the with the uh, addition of a whole management team, uh, new projects dropping. Have you got any type of um, um, you know calls or DMs or, or somebody reaching out that's trying to you know really say, "Hey, Smitty, we might want to you know fuck with you on a major level." Well, they be hitting up Juice and Sarge. Sarge and Juice, they don't tell me too much until like they know what's like right. you know, setting some shit up. It's better for me not to know because I get overly excited. So they're gonna always read stuff first, make sure everything's good for all ends before I even dip into that. I, I really do want to stay an artist. Like I don't really want to get into the business side of that shit. That's mm. that's why I have a team. Mm. So I I don't care for it. I don't want to be a producer. I hate people tell me I need to learn how to make beats. I just want to rap. Right. Like I can tell you what kind of beat in my head. I can give you a little one two, but I don't want to be there. I don't want to record myself at home. Mm. I want to go to. My people shit and record it. Like I want to be an artist. I don't want all of this other jobs. So they they do they have told me about a couple of singing gigs and shit like mm. that, but not too much. It's only mm. only so much that I actually know as an artist right now in the big stage. Damn, man, that's so, yeah, like you got like a real structured. Yeah, because I was going. I'm, yeah, you asked that question. I had that question in the beginning. I wanted to know, you know, about management. I, you asked it was it. very needed. It was very much needed. It's, like I said, there's only so much that I could do. Speak on it too. Well, you already spoke heavily on it, but I, yeah. I, I, I see that it seemed like it gave you a spark. Like the team gave you a, yes. a spark. Yes. I yeah. learned so much from y'all. You know, yeah. I beat on everybody nerves. Because you get to concentrate and just be an artist? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had to do all the extra stuff. I could just bring out music. I could say, no, yes, cool. Keep going. Change that bar. Blah, blah, blah. That's, that's, that's my job. That's all I need to worry about. Like, even with my makeup artist, she only let me do certain stuff. Like, sometimes, like, if we really busy, I can't even put on my own feet. Mm. Or I can't even zip my own self up. Yeah. Hey, y'all didn't like, get to see this on the tape, but <laughs> before we cut the cameras on, uh, I don't want to call the makeup artist. What did you say it was? Pretty a Sadidi. Oh, uh, a cosmetologist. A, a, she has a professional cosmetologist. All over here, combing her hair, putting the lip gloss on. Like, this is a real production just <laughs> in this part right here. Man. I need a team. Get to see this shit. I need a team. Hey. She a part of the team. She got three jobs. She get three chicks. Damn, what's up? When we, when we make it, my bitch got to get three chicks. That's what's up. It was three different people that each get a chick. So I got to get the three chicks. Mm. She do my hair, my makeup. She does everything for me. She comes to fuck for free. Do you hear me, bitch? And I'm already out of number five these men, so I need a girl. Right on. They be trying to punk a bitch. Oh, dude, is, <laughs> is that what the situation really is? <laughs> Rip straight up. I'm screaming. Uh, she's fucking yeah, She's sparkling. We're going to have to interview D. Mm -hmm. and then we have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. we're going to have to bring Juicy in just to yeah. see. She's feisty. No, she did her own interview. She got her own brand, her own. Most definitely. Right. Most definitely. Right. She on the way to the press box. Weight loss journey. Oh, like, okay. she got Check her motivated off. people, like, okay, okay, hair, okay. makeup. She does content. She, does, she take pictures. Wow. Good. Now we can't just gloss over the fact that you do have a cameraman directly behind our cameraman. My big dog DB, go follow him. Come on. Call me DT. What DTX underscore DB? Oh, DTX underscore DB, bitch. Yeah, we can't forget him, man. DTX Media, all that go, and that's my boy Darius. Well, my that's my boy DB, my cameraman. He he follow us when he can get to where he needs to be. He really come real handy. I, I fuck with dude. Damn. So we looking at eighteen. We looking at producers. We looking at DJs. We're looking at makeup artists. Like We're looking at cameramen. Like Do you got people that like yeah, kind of design. style you took? Uh, design. design. And you took the words out of my mouth. So you got to build it. She build it. She build it. Uh, she goes by Dollface Playhouse. Uh, she's from East Texas as well. She has a big following. Um, 20,000 plus followers. Come on, East She makes all clothes and shit. East Texas. There's somebody that's good too. Is, that, is this one of her outfits? Then? Actually, no. This isn't okay. one of her pieces. This is something I got from the trunk. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so you got the Ride East tape just dropped. Yes. You say you steady recording. Mm -hmm. 
What can we look for next from Smitty Hollins? I don't know. I'm just playing. Now, I'm finna give y'all hoes the visuals. <laughs> uh oh, oh <laughs> you okay. May be the EP, you may not. to it, you know, and, and it's a vibration that a lot of, you ain't gonna have a lot of clothes on. Nobody <laughs> will have a lot of clothes on when you listen to the shit. Not all the songs. Not all, I'm just saying. It's a, that's the thing, because I'm, that's the thing, don't get me to think that, because that's what I'm saying, it's a variety of bitches on that hoe. You may got two, three bitches on there where you make you be like, you, mm, mm, mm. a couple of me talking my shit, then you got this weird little bitch on there, and then you got some stories and shit on there. It ain't just, talk about it. Ooh. Mm. Don't make it sound like that, because I'm not just a, you know what I'm saying, no booty taking niggas and all they rapper. A bitch can rap. A bitch is a lyricist. A bitch can write. Okay, okay. so, okay, this, before we get out of here, let's kind of focus in on the craft. Like, what is it that inspires you or your pen to actually be creative and come up with these songs you have? It depends on the beat. Mm. I gotta feel the beat. I gotta relate to a beat in a way that I can even think of. Like, when I start, I think most artists do. They just find different melodies. They don't even really rap. They just mm. go like different melodies and flows. And if that shit just hit, like, you know what I'm saying? If this thick, then, then yeah, like, oh, this this is what I'm listening to. Like, what's that word? I don't know how I'm gonna do that because I fucked up a K yesterday. Facade yesterday. I fucked up. Facade. Yeah, I said facade. Facade, good. <laughs> and what I said, I said some shit. I said some shit yesterday too. I fucked up Liberace. Yes. I didn't know. I'm talking about who do I am, brother? Who did Liberace? Yes. That man said, man, Liberace. Yes. I'm like, oh, anyway. I feel it. It's, it was a famous uh, pianist. L I B R. A-C-E, I think. Yeah, like you said, right. yeah I, I fucked it all up. So don't feel yeah, bad about it. Fuck up another word so we can laugh. No. So, so it's the track? You, you got to feel got the track? I gotta feel the beat. Yeah. I gotta feel the beat. And I think most artists, like, I ain't gonna say, okay, I can't use it for most artists, but, like, people I have ran into and talked to, like, we do have voice memos. We'll just randomly say shit in voice memos. They gonna start voice memos. Here, like, a more flow or cook that we came up with and put it to that beat to change it to the flow. Well, this is what I do now. I hear something or I find something that I had wrote before and I just added to that and I build off of a bar that I already had in my mm -hmm. notes. So I build off that bar. Or if it's from scratch and I'm just feeling that hole, then I'm just, I'm just type well, I ain't writing no more. I use my phone, just typing that shit in, typing that shit in. So yeah. I love music though. Music is cool. Music is my vibe. Real quick, I heard you say you on some R and B blast all the time. I who, 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 who's in your in your R and B mix? We got Summer Walker, we got Janae Echo, we got Usher. I love Chris Brown. I love Kanye West. I love Kanye West. I love Kanye West. I love Kanye West. I love Chris Brown. I love me some Brand Fayez and Vivian. If you do something to my song, I like Trevor Jackson. Uh, then I love me some good 2000s and 90s. And then this shit. Charlene, I love Jaheen. I like singing. Like that shit be like singing to me. I mean, yeah. It, it, I so feel is, is, it, is, it like, shit, like, is it like you know being a rap artist? Like being you know what I'm saying you know I play ball basketball. So I fucked it ever school. Well, I'm saying the point guard would always want to play post, and the post would always want to play point guard. 
just for fun, I'm saying. So is that a rap a rap artist thing? Or like, then I can sing too. You know what I'm saying? Let me sing. Like, I mean, I, if, if I'm feeling a beat, I probably will showcase my singing ability. Okay. It always starts with beat, and most people uh, send me rap beats or some shit like this, mm -hmm. so it's more natural to rap. And, like, I just feel like I got tune. Anyway, okay. So I don't feel like a bitch can just, like, sing or whatever. Right really. So, yeah, but, it, like, the last song there, Sex Tales, mm -hmm. that's, like, the closest singing song is on that, uh, my tape. Gotcha. But it did give you the variety of what's to come. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you heard it. Well, uh, I do got one more question. You know what I'm saying? One more. And it's really just a, a question, though, to provide inspiration for other artists. Okay. Um, that may be even younger, or artists that's already been in the game. Um, because you have made, like I said, in a year, you made some hell of a strides. What advice would you give artists, you know what I'm saying, to step their game up or to level up or just get to the next level of the shit? Take constructive criticism. Everybody is not trying to be mean to you. And stay true to yourself, to your craft, and be consistent. Hmm. You gotta take constructive criticism. Constructive criticism. That means <laughs> you gotta take a motherfucker telling you, nigga, I don't like this song. You, you need to go back in the booth with that shit. You, you know what I'm saying? And uh, <laughs> I think, do you got people around you? I'm gonna say, I'm not. Man. That's what I was about to ask. Do you got niggas around you or friends that just be like, oh, girl, that's Jamie? No, because my best friend, since we was six, like, we 24 now, what's the math? But anyway, my best friend in New Year's, Do's and Don'ts, the most popular song, mm -hmm. she hated that hoe. That's 18 years. She told me, she's like, she said, I don't know. I know she hated it. She said, Like it real quick. We keep saying that, but uh, what's your favorite track on the mixtape? On the newest album, what's your favorite track? The intro, uh, three stacks flow. That's what y'all heard uh, <laughs> before we started this interview. I like it too. Three stacks flow. Yeah. I like it too. You know what I'm saying? That's my favorite. So your yeah, man uh, Smitty really on this motherfucker spinning, making the uh, 903 look real good out here. You know what I'm saying? It's, so, really, it's really a nice body of work. Not even to suit my own horn, but like, mm -hmm. you just go get it and just listen to it. It's kind of, it's real good. Like, it's good. Like, I get, I got, like, even like, and when the feedback I'm getting, like, I like when people say this and no skip, even though I'll be like, oh, okay, okay, that's cool. But I already like when people tell me their favorite songs is more than two. Right they give me multiple songs. It's 10 songs. Like, it's only 22 minutes long, short stuff. So they give me multiple songs, like, when they tell me their favorite. I'm scratching my head because I said, I, t I named the two I like more than She said more than two. But anyway, I'm going to. Wow, I wasn't even trying to be funny. She's trying to listen. Anyway, though, but, but the project, though, now, nah, no bullshit, though, man. Um, Smitty Hawkins making this 903 East Texas shit look good. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, man, we appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, for coming back. Thank you for having fucking me. Fucking with us, man, over here at the press box. I'm you know, fucking child. You know, so. Uh, Second son, my boy. <laughs> We got some shit going on, y'all. We're going to have to book him for some serious stuff. Come on, nigga. That's my brother. We're going to have to read y'all some shit, tell y'all what's wrong with y'all. <laughs> That's a whole nother interview right there. Yeah. Oh. Do Julie talk about baby? What's Julie talking about? Hey, no, you got it. You do? Oh, I need to be on it, though. Every, I need, I every, I need every to have, other day. I need to have a third eye right here when you, I walk in. You, oh. oh. Over there in the cut, yes, he made juice. You know what I'm saying? The Juice City, motherfucking Blaze. 
You know what I'm saying? Keep that shit blazing. Uh, yeah. We over here in TYL, Rose City. My brother's second son. Tell the God on the lens. Tape behind the scenes. Smith and Hawk, you know what I'm saying? I'm your brother, boy. Queen of the East. Come on now. Say it again now. Let this pussy hold no. Queen of the East, Smith yeah, This has been another Press Box presentation, man. Y'all tune in, like, subscribe, share it to the Press Box on YouTube, Instagram. Oh, Tell these folks how to find Smitty Hawkins in it and everywhere. And enjoy her two underscores on Instagram, but Smitty Hawkins is everywhere on all streaming platforms. Just look me up. Just go with that shit, bitch. Boom. Every group, every group works. Even though you don't like the song, every group is a good looks to me, bitch. So thank you. Yeah, bitch.